for the truth the girls. All right. Hi, everyone. My little angel is here. Want to say hi, Gunny? All right. Hi. <laughs> anyway. Hey. I said, let's, let's try to do a vlog even though you're here, okay? Because I really got a vlog in Jones. So I, I've been doing some research here. As somebody on my Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash the truth of girls, she posted a link to an article on natural news. Very interesting. Biological mind control. Scientists learn to successfully create, delete, and restore memories. Some scientists did some studies on rats and they found that they could erase a memory using electrical stimulus and then they could actually reactivate the memory also later using, again, an electrical stimulus. And what they basically do is they take a rat that is trained to be sensitive to light and they, um, it's a lot like the Pavlov dog where the dog will salivate when the bell goes. Well, this rat has been, or mouse, has been trained to have a fear response to the light because it has been taught to associate the light with an electrical shock. Gunner, please don't, please. Gunny! This is why I don't vlog anymore. No, but stop it! That's why I don't vlog anymore. Now this article goes into saying, uh, beyond futuristic healthcare treatment, how else could this technology be applied? And they're sort of suggesting that this kind of thing could be used as a form of biological mind control. Uh, I guess, you know, hypothetically, anything's possible. I don't think it's realistic, though. Uh, first of all, they already have very efficient mind control techniques. And second, th this is actually not anything new, and I'm going to show you that there are a couple of examples of other research of this kind of thing that date back to, what, the 1940s even. So it's nothing new. And um, it's probably not very cost effective and, it, and, and it's also very specific. I mean, you're targeting one specific memory. I mean, here the, these are rats who have a, a fear, a memory associated fear. And, and, and so they can just target that one memory of the thing that caused the fear. Uh, but, uh, you know, why use that when you can do things like use other hypnotic mind control techniques, uh, incorporating stuff like uh, amnesic drugs and, you know, truth serums and, and suggestions. Uh, back in the 1990s, a neuroscientist called Kareem Nader from uh, NYU, he did experiments on mice where he did the same thing, provoking a fear response to a stimulus. And uh, it was very, it was kind of like this. Well, there are three and they have similarities. What he did was he provokes the fear response, creates a memory. What they had realized was that memory formation involves the synthesis of certain kinds of proteins in the brain. And it's like your brain is creating this network um, that involves using this protein. And not only the formation of the memory, but the, the persistence of the memory and uh, I mean the, the, ma the maintenance of the memory uh, is dependent on this kind of a process. So you, I mean, look, you, you, there are a lot of things that happen in your life, but you don't remember them forever. And part of the memory process is when you bring it up and you recall it, you're reactivating it, you're sort of solidifying it. It's also changing because it's also taking into account um, more information that you have right now, such as the state of mind that you're in at the moment when you retrieve the memory. But that retrieving it is part of keeping it alive. And, and that the, the process in your brain involved in retrieving it is, is similar to the one that's involved in forming it. So if you can interfere with this process, you can actually sort of nuke the memory. And so this brings me uh, to Kareem Nader, and there was this article in Wired magazine about two years ago. The forgetting pill erases painful memories forever. So this was about uh, Kareem Nader's rat studies. And what he did was, again, the, the, the rat, or was it a mouse, whatever, wrote it, um, was taught to associate uh, the stimulus with uh, fear because it was coupled with electroshocks. And um, then what he did was he would, you know, stimulate this response by exposing him to the trigger, but then inject the brain of the rat or mouse um, with something that would inhibit the synthesis of these proteins that are needed for the formation of these memories. And like I said, the formation and the maintenance, they're very connected and bringing up the memory. If you interfere with that, you can actually sort of nuke the memory. And uh, it tells the story of how he had done this research and how when he was doing it, he 
Um, he found out that actually very similar research had been done 44 years earlier. There had been a study where they had done the same thing, association of, with the stimulus and you know creating the fear response, and then bringing this memory up would generate the fear response. So they can, they can monitor whether the memory's been erased or not by whether the fear response is still there. Um, it, and they did the same kind of thing where they erased the memories, except that they used um, electrical stimulus to, uh, to, um, to, to modify the memory and, uh, and so the fear response. So 44 years ago, or actually longer, because this was in the 90s, so way back in the late 40s or 50s, uh, they, they, they'd been doing these studies, uh, but they were using uh, like electrical stimulus. Uh, then there was uh, Kareem Nader in the 1990s who was doing it using a shot into the brain um, that would interfere with the synthesis of this protein. And that could also be used to interfere with the formation and retention of memory. And uh, then more recently, they were using optical pulses, so the higher frequency one would like maintain this. The, then they would alter the response with a lower frequency pulse, so erase the memory, but then they could reactivate it by using the higher frequency pulse. So it's all kind of similar, but they're all just like little rat and mouse studies. And that's not the same thing as, well, this is going to be available to the public, we're going to all get our brains nuked, which we're probably already having done to us with our cell phones and the Wi-Fi and whatever else. And like I said, there's already a lot of commonly used mind control techniques. I mean, every time you turn on your TV, you're subjecting yourself to mind control. So could there be applications for something like uh, PTSD? I think, you know, possibly, but let's say you're, you're having a PTSD because of a memory. You going to go in and have your brain injected with some kind of a chemical because you know, you have to dredge up the memory, then get your brain injected, and it'll nuke the memory. But are you willing to take that risk? I don't know who really would be. So I think it's all just kind of sci-fi at this point, you could say. And there was another thing. A few years ago, there was this article going around about a brain-eating vaccine, which actually was the work of a Dr. Sapolsky in Australia, who'd been testing how a herpes virus could be genetically engineered to act as a neuroprotectant um, in a mouse who is under a very extreme stress, like undergoing a stroke or something like that. And that with this um, given to the, to the mouse, I think through an injection, um, somehow they didn't have the kind of neurological damage they should have had from that. And then the Daily Mail got hold of this and it turned into the brain-eating vaccine. <laughs> But, you know, Sapolsky himself said possibly this research down the road could become like a vaccine against stress. But, I mean, that's his idea, but we're not anywhere near that. Again, this is like all sci-fi at this point. Does this translate to, let's say, let's nuke our memories of our bad relationships? I don't think so, because that's actually like a whole series of memories that spans for years. So you're going to dredge it up and nuke it which they don't have the technology to do right now anyway. And if they did, you're actually kind of just producing like a long-term amnesia, which I don't think anybody wants. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time.